ability to be able to add power systems into your mission critical applications can be a huge benefit for any engineer because that way you can get integrated diagnostics and you can solve maintenance issues quickly and efficiently. Let me show you how easy that can be. As you can see here is our power supply for the system. I also have our UPS 1600 which is connected on Profinet. Here's the battery module and the energy storage link for the communication path between these two and we have a 1516 controller and this is a system we want to bring into the project. First step is I come over here and as you can see I have a 1500 controller and a comfort panel and currently they're connected on Profinet. What I like to do now is go over to the hardware catalog and choose power supplies, UPS, 1600 and you can see here we have two choices. The first one happens to be the 10 amp and that is correct so let's drag and drop it into the project and as you can see the handling is identical. If I want to change an attribute of this UPS, give focus to it, right click, choose properties and let's change the Ethernet address to 192.168.04. And if I want to do some device configuration, let's go down to buffering and let's change it down to 30 seconds instead of 60. And I want to actually disable the enable reset. If I want to do some signaling, I have the ability to do it here directly for alarming, but I'm not going to for this application. And now I can choose the actual battery. If I have a Siemens battery, the first choices are right here. I can use the drop down menu and choose this 3.2 ampere hour unit. I can choose up to six of them. This particular application we have one. And if I have a third party, I can enter the data right here as well. Next, what I like to do is go down to the web server and activate the web server, accept the security note. Okay, how about networking? Well, let's mouse over the interface of the UPS, drag and drop Profinet up to the actual controller, and as you can see, again, the handling is identical. So our project configuration is complete. Let's give focus to the actual main CPU. Click on the download arrow button. Now he's going to compile the fact that I've added in these changes into this actual project. Click on load. Now he's going to load this down to our actual controller. You can see he's in a stop mode. Click finished. And we should be ready to go. And we are. We're in the run mode. Let's give focus to the HMI. Click on the start simulation. So basically I have the ability to, to simulate or virtualize a panel and test out my system before I buy the hardware. He has established a connection and as you can see I have this actual diagnostic indicator on my standard control screen. So what I like to do is come over here and flip the battery fault and at this point he's going to try to pulse check and look for this battery at least three times and now he has a system fault on the UPS and the actual 1500. So as you can see our diagnostic indicator has turned red and we have a wrench. So let's click on that and we have the control for our diagnostic indication. Let's actually navigate down through all the way through the Profinet system and there is the actual UPS and now you can see the breadcrumbs of where he is in the Profinet architecture as well as his part number and it is a battery diagnostic. Well at this point I want to use a web navigator and let's actually go to the web server of this UPS and let's type the address of 192.168.0.4, click enter. So now we actually are at the interface for the web server and let's type in the password. Now you're going to see a photorealistic view of this actual UPS and you see we do have a system fault. Part number and all the other normal information are located here on the actual system itself. Let's choose alarms, pending alarms, and as you can see here, the communication path to the battery is no longer possible and so we need to check that communication path and figure out is it the battery or is it the actual communications. So the next thing I like to do is actually turn the AC off and let's use the actual 1500 to diagnose this. Let's go over to our alarms, click OK. He's going to update and look for everything in the system buffer. You can see we have a maintenance here and even the 1500 controller knows that we've gone into buffering mode as they've accomplished all this in just a matter of minutes. Now that's engineering efficiency.